Tonight, left behind. The final withdrawal of all U.S. troops in Afghanistan, leaving behind military equipment and American citizens in a country now under the complete control of the Taliban. This is an evacuation notice. Please prepare to evacuate. This as major disasters ravage the United States. It's just scary. Like, this is my home, you know. From wildfires in the West. We finally got out the house. To the aftermath of Hurricane Ida. The massive search and rescue effort now underway. All this and more tonight on Fake Nation. America's forever war now officially over as the final U.S. troops depart Afghanistan. Welcome to Faith Nation. I'm Jenna Browder. Good evening. I'm John Jessup. Tonight, America's involvement in the war in Afghanistan is officially over after a messy exit that incurred the greatest loss of life to American service members in a year and a half. The president tonight declared, quote, I take full responsibility, adding that it was time to end this war, holding fast to his decision to evacuate all U.S. troops in the now Taliban-controlled country leaving many Americans behind. CBN News Capitol Hill correspondent Abigail Robertson has the latest on the fall of Afghanistan. Abigail? Well, as you said, President Joe Biden defended his decision today to leave Afghanistan before safely evacuating all remaining U.S. citizens and allies. The president claimed the mission was a success and said it was time to bring the war to a close. For those remaining Americans, there is no deadline. We remain committed to get them out if they want to come out. Leaving August the 31st is not due to an arbitrary deadline. It was designed to save American lives, and I was not extending a forever exit. Celebratory gunfire heard throughout Kabul Monday night as the last U.S. flight left Afghanistan with Major General Chris Donahue, who led the evacuation mission, being the last to board the final flight, ending the U.S.'s longest war. Every single U.S. service member is now out of Afghanistan. I can say that with 100 percent certainty. 120,000 people evacuated in 17 days, but as many as 200 U.S. citizens remain in the country, now under Taliban control. Many are dual citizen Americans with deep roots and extended families in Afghanistan who resided there for many years. For many, it's a painful choice. The U.S. State Department sees diplomacy as the main hope for getting U.S. citizens and allies left behind out of the country, while many Republicans are criticizing President Biden for not keeping this promise made two weeks ago. If there's American citizens left, we're going to stay till we get them all out. Also left behind, military weaponry. Members of the Taliban seen here inspecting helicopters and warplanes deemed inoperable by the Pentagon. Former U.S. Senator Jim DeMint tells CBN News we've left Afghanistan as bad off as when we got there 20 years ago. For us to exit in humiliation it is just so hard for me to swallow. DeMint argues what's happening now is not a surprise to our intelligence communities. We knew, especially in, in Afghanistan, that as soon as the Afghan army knew that Americans would not be there to back them up and pay their salary, that they would disintegrate overnight. It wouldn't happen over months. They would immediately know that the only way for them to live was to make peace with the Taliban. And just hours after the U.S. completed its withdrawal, al-Qaeda congratulated the Taliban on its takeover of Afghanistan, with both groups viewing it as a moment to incite and recruit new supporters to the global jihad movement. John, Jenna. All right, thank you, Abigail. And here with us now, Kirk Leopold, a retired U.S. Navy commander of the USS Cole and author of Front Burner, Al-Qaeda's Attack on the USS Cole. Commander, welcome. Thank you for joining us um, this evening. So we heard the president speak today. Uh, 20 years in Afghanistan, now all over. Uh, commander, just your thoughts tonight. How are you feeling? Well, obviously very mixed emotions. Like a lot of veterans today, I look at what has happened and occurred over the last two weeks as this debacle of a withdrawal has occurred. I think that while most Americans don't want a forever war, what the Americans weren't given was actually an understanding of why we were invested there. When you look at why we went in after the attacks on my ship in 2000, 
The 9-11 attacks certainly drove it in 2001. We need to be invested in that part of the world. It sits geographically in what's called the arc of instability between China, Pakistan, and Iran. And there is no substitute for having those eyes on the ground that really give you that ability to understand what is happening in a society, in a military, and throughout the country. So how we withdrew was an absolute disgrace for our nation. I mean, government officials say we still have both air and land options to facilitate a passage out. They seem to think they have a lot of leverage, but, you know, the mantra for the United States military has always been to leave no one behind, and the withdrawal left many American citizens stranded in Afghanistan. President Biden, in his speech, says they'll still try to get them out. Um, what happens to these people, Commander? Well, I'm very concerned when the president says... I'll try to get you out. That certainly is a shift from what he promised like you had at the beginning of the show, Jenna, where he said, I will get you out. We will remain until all Americans are out. But the reality is the Taliban does not control all of Afghanistan. They control large swaths of it. In between that, that's controlled by ISIS-K. That's controlled by Al-Qaeda. That's controlled by warlords, drug warlords specifically. So our citizens may have to navigate trying to get out through Pakistan, trying to go north to Uzbekistan or Tajikistan. The chances of them being able to pass through those areas safely are slim and none. And so consequently, Americans have been abandoned. The administration does not want to admit that. But when you look at what is happening on the ground, the intelligence services and the people are there knew that this was a possibility. And now the reality is with 80 to 100 billion dollars worth of top-notch U.S. military equipment there. We just create us, created the finest armed U.S. designated terrorist organization in history. And the reason we went in 20 years ago has now been wasted by the Biden administration, because if you don't think these well-armed Taliban aren't going to create safe havens for these terrorist groups, aren't going to engage in terrorism themselves, they're sadly mistaken. Commander Leopold, um, you had just mentioned earlier about the arc of instability. Uh, President Biden said earlier tonight that uh, he wasn't going to hand over this war to a fifth American president and that we shouldn't be fighting a war based on circumstances of 20 years ago, that the world has changed significantly in the last 20 years. There's been a lot of focus and shifting now towards China. Uh, I, I want to get your thoughts on that. I think what the president unfortunately was handed was a failure, actually, by four previous, by three previous presidents. President Bush, President Obama, President Trump, and now President Biden had failed to address the root cause of what allowed the Taliban to continue to exist. Pakistan gave the Taliban safe haven. They allowed them to recruit, to arm, to finance, to train and conduct terrorist operations into Afghanistan that resulted in the deaths of American citizens. But we would not hold Pakistan accountable. And so until you go to the root cause of how this problem continued to fester for 20 years, then President Biden may be right in saying we should get out. But the real, real solution to the problem would have been to turn to Pakistan and say no more. And if you won't get in and govern your Northwest territories, we will govern them for you. We had a policy for years where we would do drone strikes in there, taking out top, top Taliban leaders, and we should have continued that policy. Right now, you want to make Afghanistan and the Taliban hurt? Wipe out the poppy fields. The hmm. billions of dollars that they get from the drug trade alone is going to handicap them and not allow them to project power that may endanger not only the United States and our global interests around the world, but our allies as well. And that should be All a right. consideration going forward. Retired Navy Commander Kirk Leopold, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for your insights tonight. Thank you, John and Jenna. Pleasure to be on. In other news tonight, the aftermath of Hurricane Ida is coming into focus as the storm, now a tropical depression, heads north. Four people are dead and many more still missing in an ongoing search and a rescue effort. The effects of the storm's devastation still being felt even as massive wildfires tear through the West Coast. CBN's Brody Carter has the latest on the major disasters sweeping across the country. Brody, the Ida is still far from over. Well, John Jenna's Ida does track northeast. Now it could dump more rain over Tennessee's Humphreys County.
That's for just last week, 22 people died after record rainfall and flash flooding. Emergency personnel there tell me they're preparing for the worst while hoping for the best. In Louisiana, hopes are being realized as the search for life has led to nearly 800 water rescues. The ceiling and every room caved in. Many people remain unaccounted for as towns sit in the heat of summer without power. Cut off from communication, millions without cell phone service, and the electricity could remain out as long as a month. Eyes in the sky show the swath of destruction left behind from Hurricane Ida. Only bare bones remain for many homes and businesses. Now a tropical depression, the forecast track means flash flood and tornado warnings could threaten much of the eastern United States until next week. We've been in our emergency operations center. I slept here. I will continue to sleep here and my home's flooded. I lost my car. The death toll from Ida rose to at least four, two in Louisiana and in George County, Mississippi. This highway collapse killed two and injured a dozen more motorists trapped on the roadway. Meantime, catastrophic fires sweep the western plains and Rocky Mountains. Critical winds and drought conditions are causing wildfires to stay ablaze. 19 fires currently rage in California. We have spotting and torching and uh, very dry fuels under this drought conditions. The Dixie Fire still burns roughly a month and a half after it started. Only 50% contained. This is an evacuation notice. Please prepare to evacuate. Tourists are now evacuating south of the lake. The flames have torched about 200,000 thousand acres, destroying more than 650 structures, and it's only 15 percent contained. In the South, heat-related illnesses, they are an added threat. Many don't have clean water, in some cases, no water at all. As for California, the U.S. Forest Service and wildfires are so widespread that all national forests there will be closed until September 17th. John, Jenna, back to you. So much devastation. Thank you so much, Brody. Coming up, more dividing lines being drawn in the battle against COVID-19, mask mandates and vaccine requirements next. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself, and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead. Just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? Welcome back. Tonight, the fight over mask mandates in schools is kicking into high gear. The Department of Education now investigating Iowa, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Utah for discriminating against students with compromised immune systems by banning mask mandates in those states. We know the spread of COVID happens when masks are not being used. We need to get those students back in because many times those are the students that really require the most support. And the government investigations come as, as last week, nearly 204,000 new cases of sick kids were reported, the second highest week on record. This is the FDA is set to approve the Pfizer vaccine for kids as young as five, possibly this winter. 
And joining us now is Todd Zawicki, George Mason University Foundation Professor of Law. Uh, Todd, thank you for coming on Faith Nation tonight. I uh, see so you made news when you fought George Mason's vaccine mandate and you ended up winning. You, you've stated that you're not uh, in the anti-vax camp. Tell us why you feel the mandate was wrong and why you didn't need the shot. Well, my case relies specifically on me, which is um, I got COVID back in March 2020. Um, it was no fun. Uh, nobody needs to tell me not to get COVID again. And so I'm very conscious of this. And if there had been a vaccine back then, based on what I knew, I would have probably gotten it. It would have been a lot better off than uh, uh, getting COVID. But the reality is now I do have COVID. And it's very clear that once you have COVID and you've recovered, you've got uh, natural mu immunity. And the evidence is clear now. It used to be that it was at least as good as vaccine immunity. It quite clearly now is better than vaccine immunity, as we saw in this study that came out from Israel uh, this week that showed that those who have been vaccinated have a 13 times higher risk of, uh, of infection, 27 times higher risk of symptomatic infection, eight times higher risk of death than somebody with natural immunity like me. And so I was very careful. I got my antibodies tested. My immunologist said my antibodies level was comparable to somebody who had just been vaccinated. Um, and so I don't need uh, the vaccine in order to be, protect myself or those around me. And the final thing I'll say is, is the evidence is also very clear that those who have had COVID and recovered are at not just the same risk of side effects as, uh, as anybody from any vaccine, but we actually have an elevated risk of side effects. So it really is all of, uh, you know, none of the benefits and all of the risks plus more of somebody who might actually benefit from the vaccine. And so based on that, I argued that I should get, uh, based on my natural immunity, my demonstrable natural immunity, I should be exempted from the university's um, uh, vaccine mandate. Todd, along those lines, uh, dissenters say the jury's still out. Uh, you just you just mentioned that Israeli study. A number of studies are touting natural immunity. Uh, what do you believe that means for call supporting vaccine passports and vaccine credentials? It's completely ridiculous. Um, there are there have now been 15 studies of uh, to compare natural immunity uh, with vaccines, and every and all 15 have shown that that uh, in the range of 90 to 95 percent protection, which is what the uh, mRNA uh, vaccines are at their peak. And now, as we know, they wane very quickly. Another study from Israel found that vaccine protection wanes 40% a month. Natural immunity wanes 5% um, a month. Um, and then, um, uh, and so, and so, and we know that it's much better than the more mediocre vaccines like Johnson & Johnson, which even in the clinical trials was only about 66% uh, protection. There is literally no doubt about this anymore. It's also mm. very clear that natural immunity, um, as we saw in the Israeli study, is very resistant to, um, to, uh, uh, to variants, such as the Delta variant, because it recognizes the entire protein, whereas the vaccine is only used to target this narrow spike protein. And now we're actually vaccinating people against a spike protein that is now extinct, and not only now extinct, it's been extinct for several generations of uh, variants. And so uh, natural immunity has proven itself on, on this. Um, uh, and as we see more and more breakthrough infections throughout the country, there are more breakthrough infections um, in a month. Um, uh, uh, there are 35,000 breakthrough infections a week is what mm. the CDC uh, um, estimated. There have been more breakthrough infections right. just this spring than natural immunity breakthroughs in the entire world. Hmm. All right, Todd Zawicki, George Mason University Foundation Professor of Law. Thank you so much for coming on this evening. All the best. Thank you, John and Jenna. Great to talk with you. And up next, our Faith Nation political panel breaks down Afghanistan and the day's headlines. Stay with us. Daddy? Yeah, buddy? How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels Look, in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment you won't find anywhere else. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. 
the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board-certified neurologist and number one New York Times best-selling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm going to show you how, along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD only from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection. In Protect Your Brain, get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD, Protect Your Brain, and get it today. Welcome back. Tonight, the stage is set for a debt ceiling showdown on Capitol Hill. The two-year suspension of the debt limit concluded at the end of last month, resetting a prior cap of new borrowing to $22 trillion. The Treasury Department has been resorting to what it calls extraordinary measures to prevent the U.S. from going into default. Experts expect the Treasury to run out of cash by the end of the fiscal year, which is on September 30th. When Congress returns, Democrats are set to tie lifting the debt limit to a multi-trillion dollar wish list on infrastructure and social spending. For their part, Republicans say they will not support raising the nation's debt limit. Well, here with us now are Faith Nation political panel, Nathan Gonzalez, editor and publisher of Inside Elections, and CBN chief political analyst, David Brody. Welcome to you both this evening. Uh, let's start with you, David. Um, if Republicans hold fast and uh, decide not to cast those 10 votes necessary to defeat that bill that ties the debt limit to the Democratic wish list, what options, David, does that give Democrats to avoid a government default? Well, they'll have to go it alone, John. Uh, that's the bottom line. And that's what Republicans are saying to them publicly and privately. Say, you know what? You created this. You want to do all of this spending. You go ahead and raise the debt limit, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, or raise the debt ceiling yourself. And of course, we know that this has been bipartisan typically. Uh, I say typically, it pretty much has been bipartisan throughout the decades and uh, decades here in Congress. Uh, but this is a different time right now in Washington. So uh, I think it's going to be you're going to be hard pressed to find 10 Republicans to raise the debt ceiling uh, in the Senate. And for sure in the House, you're not going to get the vote. So uh, I think Democrats will probably end up having to go alone on this like they've done most of their legislative agenda anyhow. Uh, let's talk about Afghanistan, the political ramifications of the withdrawal uh, from Afghanistan. We heard President Biden speak this afternoon. Uh, Nathan, this question to you. you. He said that he took responsibility for this decision. Um, others are disagreeing with that, though, that he's, that he's pointing the blame um, at the Afghan government, at the previous administration. Um, your take on what we saw today from the president. Yeah, Jenna, well, I think this issue has quickly uh, kind of devolved into another partisan issue that, you know, depending, probably depending on who you voted for in the 2020 election depends on whether you think Biden is to blame or Trump or the other previous presidents are to blame for what happened in Afghanistan. Uh, I think the bottom line uh, politically is that I, I'm skeptical that Afghanistan and this withdrawal um, as an issue will be as relevant a year plus from now in the 2020 midterm elections. But I think what Biden, what President Biden has to be careful of is he has to be careful of losing the benefit of the doubt. If people no longer can trust what he says or trust what our government says, and that is a, a broader problem, not only diplomatically, uh, but politically when it comes to making the case uh, to voters in the next year or the next three years in the presidential election. Uh, this question to either of you, whoever wants to grab it, you know, we're learning more about the interactions between President Trump, or I'm sorry, pardon me, I just had a flashback, President uh, Biden <laughs> and the military families uh, at that dignified transfer in Dover uh, in, in, on Sunday. President Biden's often praised for his empathy and his ability to grieve with those who are grieving. Uh, this time, though, it seems a little bit different from what we're hearing from families. Uh, what do you read into that? Maybe David first and, and Nathan, if you want to chime in. Well, he's taking a lot of hits. He looked down at his watch. And of course, we know that one of the uh, family members uh, of one of the fallen victims uh, was banned as it relates to censorship on Facebook and Instagram based on some of the criticism they had towards uh, this president. Uh, look, 
let, let's just be honest, and, and, and there's no fact check needed. Joe Biden told George Stephanopoulos that he would not leave any Americans behind in Afghanistan. That's what he said. There are Afghanistans that, or excuse me, there are Americans that have been left behind in Afghanistan as we speak today, as we talk today. So that's a lie. Uh, that, that he, he actually said that he, he would not leave until all Americans are out. Uh, so, so, so this is part of this uh, moral slash immoral tap dance that we've seen from Joe Biden. Joe Biden wrote in in 2020 as this guy who was going to be the, the moral record setter, the guy that was going to come in and, and change the, you know, everything that was wrong with Donald Trump. But I think what we've seen instead is a lot of concern from uh, a morality perspective as to how Joe Biden has handled things. And I just want to point out something that Nathan brought up, which I think is interesting. Um, I don't think people are necessarily going to be talking about Afghanistan uh, in 2022 as we move forward. But I got to tell you, I, Afghanistan represents ineptitude. And ineptitude can, can erode your poll numbers on COVID, the economy, and crime in many other places. That's where he's got to right. be careful. All right. Uh, gentlemen, we have to leave it there this evening, but thank you so much. Uh, Nathan Gonzalez, David Brody, have a great night. And we'll be right thank back. You. Thanks. I am Regent's first ROTC graduate student. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Wednesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen, chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers, but even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Well, we had a jam-packed show, so unfortunately, we are out of time. Thank you so much for watching Faith Nation. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a great night.